Hi there. Today I received something from eBay again. So let's just open the box and see what it is. And the box says pomme de terre, which is uh, potatoes. So that's cool. Let's open this box of potatoes and see what actually is inside. And then we have the scope itself. We are now upstairs in my electronics lab. I just received this uh, Atom. Apart from the oscilloscope, it came with a user guide. It came with two nice 60 MHz probes. And it came with a USB cable. No software though, and a bag of different uh, clips and stuff. It also came with a power uh, cable. If you look at the oscilloscope, um, it's not very big. It has a carry handle on top, and it has some uh, clip uh, flip out feet here uh, at the bottom. And uh, it sits really well, and if you push on top, it doesn't tip, uh, tilt over backwards. Like mechanically, it's, it's built like a tank. So there's definitely no way you can uh, destroy it without actually dropping it on the floor or something stupid like that. If we just quickly look at the back before powering it up, um, there's not that much. There's a power input, which is 100 to 240 volts. Uh, it uses about 50 watts. Uh, apart from that, there's an RS-232 connector you can uh, control it uh, via PC uh, if you want to take measurements or something like that in a test environment. Then there's a USB host connector, meaning you can connect it uh, also through a PC and control it through that way. Finally, there's a pass-fail output, um, which uh, indicates that, th that this oscilloscope uh, can be used for factory testing. So anyway, let's just flip it uh, back, round and uh, connect the power so yeah there's a big and clunky mechanical power switch on the left and it uh, it runs a bit of a self-test during power up um, if you don't like this screen uh, you are not the only one uh, but okay it powered up really quickly and uh, for some reason everything is in Chinese so okay, let's uh, start with the display button and uh, yeah, I'm not that good at Chinese, so let's try and find the English one. Yep, yeah, should be that one. No, shit. There we go. Oh, no. <laughs> Fantastic. What about the utility? There we go, language, whoops. So the first thing you notice on this oscilloscope is that it has a wide screen display. It's much wider than uh, most other oscilloscopes. And actually there's, uh, how many are there, four, five, nine, there's 18 by eight uh, squares in the graticule, which is uh, ridiculously wide. And uh, another thing that makes it even wider, uh, should we say, is that the menus are hidden and they only come up if you uh, press the menu button. So that is a really, really nice thing. As you can see, if you haven't touched anything for a while, the menu disappears again and you have full screen. So that is a really nice, uh, nice screen layout and a nice feature there. Another nice uh, feature is the layout where each input has their own uh, volts per division knob and their own position knob. That really makes uh, life so much easier on a day-to-day -day basis. And the last thing is the screen colors. I, I don't know who came up with that. You have a red and blue input and the trace is uh, yellow and blue, which makes no sense whatsoever. And uh, if you use, let's say, uh, if you invert the screen, the red input here is actually the blue trace and the blue input here 
is the red trace. So yeah, I really don't know who came up with that, but that is really ridiculous. And the other drawback, the horizontal uh, button here, the horizontal control here, is pretty close to the vertical knob just next to it here. Um, but it's not too bad and they're detents, so they work pretty well. One of the probes, uh, I'll be using channel 2 here, the blue probe on the blue input. And uh, switch off channel 1 and switch on the blue one. And let's connect right here. Yep. Um, let's adjust the signal until we have something nice. Something like that and the menu off. The menu system is uh, it's quite nice. There are five soft buttons and a menu on off button here. And um, the last button is used for selecting page 2 and page 3 if there are some. So that works really nice. Okay, so if we look at the vertical button, we have all the standard ones. We have AC and DC input and the ground of course we can limit the bandwidth to 20 megahertz or full bandwidth voltage per division there's a coarse and a fine and uh, yeah the fine one is really fine so let's put it back to coarse the probe can be set to uh, times 1 times 5 times 10 times 500 times 1000 uh, and the normal probes, they, they either times 1 or times 10. And you should always use times 10 to get the, the 40 megahertz bandwidth that the scope can show. Um, and you can invert the, like the old analog days, you can invert the trace. There's something called filter here. You can set a low pass filter, high pass filter, band pass filter and band stop filter and and not only that you can also adjust the band uh, the cutoff frequency for this filter that's a really nice feature um, of course it's all done digitally but still very nice and I think I will have some use for that in future okay that was the vertical menu uh, if we look at the horizontal uh, you can select delay, uh, delay time on and off and uh, you can select the memory depth. So you can see if you select a long memory, you're actually just showing that little bit up here while it's, it's actually um, recording uh, both before and after the trigger event. So uh, if you stop the, the waveform capture, you can uh, scroll through what happened before and after the trigger event. So that's really nice if you're doing something like decoding an I2C uh, sequence or something from a remote control or RS232 or something like that. So long memory is really nice for this kind of, uh, kind of thing. Apart from that, um, we can of course select the, the time base and it goes up to, uh, or should I say down to, it goes down to 10 nanoseconds per division or all the way up to wow oh, now we are all the way to 50 seconds per division so you can catch a really long sequences the trigger menu you can uh, select edge trigger you can select on channel 1 or channel 2 you can use external trigger or you can trigger uh, to the AC line which in the uh, Europe is 50 hertz so anyway now we're triggering triggering on channel 2 um, you can select Rising, falling, or both uh, edges uh, to trigger on. Mode, normal, single, and auto. And uh, these these three modes are actually repeated on on buttons up here. So actually, you can stop the waveform uh, after a trigger, and you can uh, zoom in and uh, scroll scroll left and right here. Uh, the buttons have a very nice visible uh, backlight. They work really well. So now we have covered all the basic functions of the oscilloscope. We can take a look at some of the little more uh, fancy ones. First we have of course the math functions. Uh, on this scope, they are, 
I wouldn't say limited because these are kind of the basic ones that you you would require on everyday uh, use. In particular, the subtract function is channel two minus channel uh, one, which is really uh, a, a nice feature. So you can have a poor man's differential input. And uh, the final math function that is worth mentioning is the fast Fourier transform. Okay, fast Fourier on channel two. And we can zoom in, and uh, okay, let's see if we can get it working. Math. So yeah, there we have it. We have the square wave on top, our input on channel two, and we have uh, the the frequency spectrum below here. But in FFT mode, uh, some of the buttons are behaving uh, differently than in normal mode. So yeah, let's switch off the math function again, and we are back to normal. These are the basic functions, really. Um, apart from that, it has an automatic measure function. There's a lot of stuff we can measure here. Um, most of it on channel 1, uh, for some reason. We can change that to channel 2. We can measure voltage and we get a big display of all the different voltages we have. Minimum voltage, maximum voltage, amplitude, top voltage, base voltage, average, and the mean, and uh, RMS. We can also measure on time, meaning we can uh, get the period of the signal, and we can get the rise time, the fall time, the width of the pulse, and uh, the frequency, of course. So, um, yeah, for measurements, it's really, uh, it's really well specced. Okay, next is the cursor menu. You can, of course, always measure things manually. And, um, yeah, we have to select, uh, for some reason, we have to select uh, the channel when doing measurements. Um, but, okay, it's already set to channel 2, so we can live with that. And, um, yeah, you can adjust the cursor here. I don't know, it's just a little bit faint, I guess. Um, but, okay, we can set one here. And change to the other one and adjust that. Let's see where it is. It comes in here from the left. And uh, yeah, we can measure the, me the, the, the period, for example. It says uh, delta T 1.04 milliseconds, which gives a frequency of uh, 961. So since I know this is 1 kilohertz, I should probably have positioned that a little bit better. But uh, okay. Next is the utility menu. Here you can set things like uh, you can update the firmware, you can set the uh, the, the speed of the COM port, and uh, you can record sound. You can record the waveform. You can switch sound off, on and off. There's a little frequency counter down here. You can switch on and off. This is an automatic counter. This is an automatic counter that runs all the time, whether you're uh, using the measurement menu or, or not. You can select the language and uh, do self-test. You can select the back USB to be either connected to a computer or a pick bridge printer. Um, you can save your setup if you like. Uh, for instance, if two users using the same oscilloscope, each of you can have your own uh, setup. Uh, and finally, there's a help button. If you get lost, uh, you can press help and then the button you want help uh, about, for instance, let's try the ref run. So it says, press this button to turn on the ref menu. You can use this menu to save and recall your reference waveforms in internal memory. The button is lit when the saved reference waveform is recalled. Okay, so you can do that and you can turn the help off again. It's a sturdy little oscilloscope and uh, apart from the f funny colors on the screen, and uh, the FFT mode, which I can't figure out, uh, at least not without reading the manual. It's a pretty good little scope, and uh, I think uh, I'll be happy with it. So I think I will keep this one and sell off my GW Instec, and now that I have this one. It's very similar in operation to the DW Instec, and I, I feel uh, instantly at home with this oscilloscope. And that's really it uh, for this little review here. So yeah, thank you for watching and uh, hope to see you again soon.